In this A-level IB chemistry video, we're looking at the third type of intermolecular force, and that is dipole-dipole forces. Now, we previously met two other intermolecular force types, hydrogen bonding and London forces. Now, hydrogen bonding were the strongest and London forces were the weakest, which means that dipole-dipole forces fit in the middle, they have an intermediate strength. So what scenario do we need for dipole-dipole forces to exist? Well, they exist in all polar molecules. And the crucial thing here is they must have a permanent dipole. If it was an instantaneous one, then we'd be looking at London forces. So crucially, we need a polar molecule with a permanent dipole. Now, examples of dipole-dipole forces that exist within molecules include hydrogen fluoride, hydrogen chloride, and iodine chloride. If we were to provide a definition, we'd say that in this type of intermolecular force, there is an attraction between the positive end of one permanent dipole and the negative end of another permanent dipole on an adjacent molecule. And just to show that these are stronger, these dipole-dipole forces, when compared with London forces, let's take two molecules. Firstly, iodine chloride, and secondly, a bromine molecule. Now, their boiling points are 97 degrees for iodine chloride and only 59 degrees for a bromine molecule. Well, why is that? Well, because in bromine, you've just got London forces, but with the iodine chloride, we have both the London forces and the dipole-dipole forces. So notice that it's possible to have both type of forces. Why does iodine chloride have the dipole-dipole forces, whereas the bromine molecule doesn't? Well, it's because it's polar. And look in a different video if you want to know how you can work out if something is polar or not. Let's draw a diagram now to show dipole-dipole forces in action. So we're going to take our iodine chloride example again. Now here I've drawn two molecules of iodine chloride. Now notice that even though iodine is larger, has a larger atomic radius compared with chlorine, chlorine is more electronegative, which remember electronegativity is all about the ability of an atom to attract electrons. So if chlorine is highly electronegative, it means that it has a high ability to attract electrons. So it will be slightly negatively charged, so delta negative, which means that correspondingly the iodine will be slightly positive because it's electron deficient. And so because we have the slightly negative chlorine on one molecule being brought close to the slightly positive iodine of another molecule, you end up with a permanent dipole, so an attraction between the two. So we can call that a dipole-dipole force. And let's just remind ourselves of that definition. There is an attraction between the positive end of one permanent dipole and the negative end of another permanent dipole on an adjacent molecule. And that's exactly what you can see here happening here. There's the permanent negative end, there's the permanent positive end, and therefore they're going to attract here.